This lecture is to introduce you to concurrent collections that started in Java 5, which allow us to develop scalable multi-threaded Java applications. Prior to Java 5, if you have to deal with collections or if you have to use collections to hold on to several objects across multiple threads, we either use the synchronized collections like hash table vector or the regular collections like array list, hash map, hash set, etc. Both these collection types can be synchronized. See, these are by default synchronized and then we can get a synchronized version of these by using the utility methods in the collections class under java.util package so that when one thread is accessing one of these collections, if another thread tries to modify that collection, we get a concurrent modification exception. So you are iterating through a collection and then what one in one thread and if another thread tries to add a element or object to that collection, we will be seeing concurrent modification exception, which is good, but at the same time, we lose concurrency. So in your application, if you are doing a lot of reads in 10 different threads, and if one thread is updating a particular collection, even then you get a concurrent modification exception, which is not desirable. That's where the concurrent collections, which were introduced in Java 5, come to the rescue. So concurrent collections like concurrent hash map, concurrent array list, sorry, copy on write array list, copy on write array set, allow us to concurrently iterate and modify the collections across multiple threads. The concurrent hash map uses something called lock stripping to ensure that while one thread is iterating, if another thread modifies that collection, it will sync up at, at some point. So the JVM will do that. I will go into the details of that later. The copy on write array list, on the other hand, the copy on write array list and copy on write array set keep cloning the collection every time a write is made to that collection. So if one thread is iterating through the uh, copy on write error list and if another thread is modifying it, whenever a thread modifies it, there is a clone or copy of that entire error list that is created and then at some point it will sync them both up. So using concurrent collections, we can parallelly use collections across multiple threads and uh, modify and also iterate through them. So wherever possible in your application, if you are doing a lot of reads and less writes, because if there are a lot of writes and if you try to use concurrent collections, then there will be a lot of clones happening and it will degrade the performance on the other side. It will make use of a lot of system resources. So it makes sense to use concurrent collections in your application if you are doing a lot of reads and less writes. And it will not throw a concurrent modification exception any anymore once you start using the concurrent collections. While using the regular and synchronized collections, we could also do client-side locking. So we can check if there is an element already present in the collection, don't add it. If a particular object is already there in the collection, don't add it. If the collection is not empty, only then delete it, etc. Once we attain a lock on the collection, we could do all those checks. But concurrent collections don't allow us to do locking. We cannot synchronize the concurrent collection, but we can do client side locking by using the methods like put if absent, remove if present. All these methods are already present on these collections and we can directly use them to check if a collection is not empty, if an element is not already there in the collection, only then add it. So to quickly summarize this introductory lecture, introductory lecture. Use concurrent collections wherever and whenever possible in a multi-threaded application provided it does a lot of read operations which a lot of real-time applications do than write operations on a given collection. There are several other useful collections like deck, blocking queues, etc. which I will be presenting in a later presentation. I will also present the difference between a fail-fast and fail-safe iterator which pretty much you have heard fail-fast iterator throws a concurrent modification exception when two or more threads are trying to access the collection at the same time, whereas fail-safe iterators don't do that. The fail-safe iterators are what are used by concurrent collections. I will do that in the next few videos.